security is said to be everybody's business of a truth. That security which you provide to yourself is the only one that is uh, said to be 100%. And that is why we, on this program and on this channel, the African Independent Television, encourages you and I to ensure that we take security very, very importantly. Welcome to your program, Security Watch Africa, and thanks for staying tuned to your remaining tuned to your station. This is the only station that you get to know what and what happens in Africa. My name still remains Patrick Abambu. Today, um, it's a mixture of um, what is happening in the security in Nigeria. Uh, we must uh, say that um, in the last one week, uh, security in the country uh, can be said to be a, a mixture of uh, good and not too good. Um, we have witnessed some um, uh, resurgence of some uh, situation in Zamfara and uh, uh, Adamawa state where some of these, uh, uh, um, I will call them uh, militia or whatever name we want to call them, government, some people have said headsmen, whatever they are called, uh, we wish and pray that uh, the arraignment is put in place by the government and security agency to be able to fish them out and stop the killing of innocent Nigerians wherever they are found. Um, uh, killings have no religion. Um, he doesn't know when a, a man who has a gun to c commit crime to kill uh, wants to shoot. We will not say he's a Christian or he's a Muslim. Uh, so, and that is why we feel that uh, security agencies must be encouraged to do everything possible to ensure that the killings of Nigerians uh, it, they are, is put to a stop. And that is very, very important. Um, we also got some news from some states. The, in terms of uh, other crime situation in Ogundo State, you know, Ogun State, we must commend uh, the uh, the police command in Ogun State and also River State. Uh, we must commend because um, uh, we're told of a, a high-profile suspect that was arrested during the week. Uh, well done to CP Zaki Ahmed and his team. And also in Enugu State, where we got a report about the successful breakthrough that is recorded by the police in that state. Uh, CP Damala Mohammed has always remained one of those who uh, is a shining example for policing in Nigeria. Uh, wherever it is, wh whoever does well will commend that person. And we also we want to commend the Inspector General of Police, uh, IGP Ibrahim K. Idris, for actually giving good leadership to his command commissioners of police all over the Federation for doing their work. Most thing needs to be done as we uh, start a countdown to the general elections. A lot of uh, reports of insecurity will be will be available, but we hope and pray that the security agencies, the lead security agency in entire security, particularly that is the Nigerian police, and all that sister agencies must put their house in order and ensure that uh, lives of Nigerians are secured. We also want to use this opportunity to call on politicians that they must play the game according to the rules. Um, they should regard the lives of uh, the citizens as very, very important and not uh, as one of those things that can be wasted. Uh, so as they want to start campaigning, once they start canvassing for votes, you should know that those who seek their votes, uh, they must be alive for you to be able to administer properly. So uh, that is from us here in Security Watch Africa and from Africa Independent Television, calling on all to ensure that security is important. Yes, um, we'll bring you a report um, on uh, what is the situation in terms of uh, the way Nigerians treat uh, Niger the soldiers of the Nigerian army. Uh, we spoke with uh, Lieutenant General uh, Chuku Kadibi Obiako, a retired uh, but not tired, who told us that there's need for Nigerians and Nigerian government to do more to encourage the Nigerian soldier. Sit back as we bring you that report. Service to one's fatherland is usually a tax not many people are privileged to undertake. It is usually a time to show true patriotism to a country you call your own. Sacrificing oneself to ensure that peace and unity, which is a hallmark for any meaningful development reigns in all parts of the country. Nigeria, the pride of Africa and the most populous black country in the world, 
with over 180 million people. A country endowed with diverse social, political, religious, and economic interests, which most times threatens to divide the country. But keeping the country as one is the responsibility of the security agencies. These security agencies comprises the armed forces and the police with support from other services. But what you have mentioned here is the Nigerian army. The Nigerian army with its statutory responsibility to protect the territorial integrity of the nation today is fully involved in internal security arrangements of the country. This is so because you cannot focus on external aggressors when internal peace and security is threatened. The Nigerian army is called upon whenever there is trouble in any parts of the country. A call they have always answered to restore peace and hope to the people. These soldiers sometimes put their lives on the line to keep their country together. This they have done diligently since Lieutenant General Tukujusu Burutai took charge as the Chief of Army Staff on July 2015 at the most critical time in Nigeria's nationhood. Officers and soldiers of the Nigerian Army have keyed into General Burutai's vision to have a professionally responsive Nigerian Army in the discharge of its constitutional role. But in all this, these men and women are sometimes ridiculed by some citizens they fight to protect. They are seen by many to be doing their job for which they are being paid. But the question is, how much is enough salary to put one's life on the line? Retired Lieutenant General Chuku Kadibia Obiako, in an exclusive interview with Security Watch Africa, speaks further. When you talk about soldiers, you must think like see if you're talking of your own self. You must appreciate their problems. And so you must deal with those problems so that their morale will be such that they are ready to offer themselves for the country. But most times people look at soldiers as people who are hewn from trees, stones. Everything. Well, no, but you see, it takes a person to say, I'm ready to die for you. Why? Why would he say that? Because he knows you care for him. You, will un you understand what pains he's going to go through. You will, you will appreciate what sacrifice is making. It's very important we think that way. You're not just uh, soldiers, uh, they just. Uh, when there's something coming that way, trouble, everybody's running this way. You want the soldier to go that way. Our mentality about security is something that is odd. The same thing even with the soldier, the police. You want the policeman to stand on the road 24 hours to make sure that you have security to be in your air-conditioned room and sleep. But what have you provided for him to do? The same mentality goes for the nice white man. You, 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 you pay him pittance. You don't care about his life. You want to be comfortable in your house and pay him less than minimum wage for him to keep awake. No, we must put in humanity into this. Soldiers haven't decided to serve the country. Are ready to give up. Give, give me their life. But you must do the needful. Provide the basic essentials. All over the world, the army succeed because citizens are suddenly behind them in thick and thin. We must suddenly be behind our soldiers and all our security agencies so that we can be secured. Um, the, the truth of the matter is that um, you can't play with security because without security, 
there's no meaningful development that can take place. So we must be, uh, as a matter of national policy, as, as individual conviction, make sure that uh, we take security seriously. That is why we also call on all organizations, and both government and private sector, to support this program, Security Watch Africa, so that we can give you that information you need uh, to keep your life safe and secure and keep your business going. Because without security, really, you can't uh, progress in life. Yes, um, let's uh, go to, uh, during the week, uh, the Inspector General of Police uh, had a meeting with all his commissioners of police and assistant inspector generals of police and the management team that is talking about the deputy inspector generals of police at the first headquarters where they review security situation in the country and uh, marshal out plans for to ensure that uh, the coming elections are well policed. Uh, security Watch Africa crew was there and uh, we'll bring you the reports from that uh, meeting. The current police reform under the leadership of the 19th Indigenous Inspector General of Police, IGP Ibrahim Idris, since assumption of office June 2016, has extended to the families of deceased police officers who died serving their fatherland. The IGP Ibrahim Idris, seeing the need to alleviate the sufferings of families of deceased police officers who before their demise were breadwinners of their families, introduced the IGP Welfare Insurance Scheme, meant to provide immediate support to families of deceased police officers. It was a ton of 81 families across the various command of the Federation who lost their breadwinners to receive financial support through the IGP Welfare Insurance Scheme. A symbolic presentation to beneficiaries of the scheme was done Thursday at the police headquarters, Louis Edith House, Abuja, during the just concluded IGP conference. A total of 81 checks, amounting to 42 million 200,000, were presented to some of the beneficiaries at the conference by the Inspector General of Police. Uh, the nurses, Ari Kagime, Ephraim, Andrew. The check is for 1,164,407 naira. Also to receive on behalf of Abraham John, is the family member there, sir. Uh, the total amount is 1,200,000 naira, sir. Responding to the kind gesture of the IJP, the beneficiaries, represented by a family member of Fumilayo Akinrele, thanked the Inspector General of Police for coming to their rescue and bringing smiles to their faces again. We want to sincerely appreciate the IG for his concern, for what he has done for us, and for signing of our checks. For this you have done, sir, I want to sincerely say thank you so much, and may God bless you, sir, in Jesus' name. A total of 571 families have so far benefited from the scheme, amounting to 353 million 100,000. During the IGP conference, a number of senior police officers recently promoted were decorated with their new ranks for having served the nation well. These are DIG Osho Di Globa Agbole, in charge of Information Communication Technology, AIGP's Ibekwe Ablai, CP Godwin Chijoke Mwobodo, CP Moshu Tunde Golarumi, among others. Next person, CP Onyaguru Chijoke Ebere, will be asked. DIG. Training and development will please assist the IG. The IG training and development to assist the IG. The Inspector General of Police, IGP Ibrahim Idris, used the occasion of the conference to thank his management team and other senior officers present for all their efforts in ensuring that the police force live up to its constitutional responsibilities. Every police officer. To consider it a duty to the service of this country that the protection for life and properties and the enforcement of all laws, especially during the period of this election. Obviously, let me use the opportunity to thank all of you. Always, let me thank all of you for giving the best 
in the policing of this great nation. Thank you very much. It was, however, gathered that a total of 100,529 officers have been promoted by the Inspector General of Police since June 2016. Welcome back. Yeah, you know, when you promote uh, an officer, it gives him more feather and it gives him wings to fly and do better. I want to congratulate those who recently were decorated after their promotion and uh, uh, charge them that uh, more responsibility is now on their shoulders. Uh, Nigerians expect much, much better service from them so that um, uh, they will be set to deserve of their promotion. Yes. Um, also, one of the reforms that is being introduced to ensure that uh, uh, police uh, service in Nigeria is uh, one that is of international standard is the, the review which the Inspector General of Police did, in, did uh, set up a committee to look into reviewing the police force order 20, uh, which uh, encourages uh, the need to help to provide uh, free legal, legal services to uh, suspects that are detained in the police stations. Um, it, the launching of the amended version of that uh, police uh, uh, police force order 20 was was uh, witnessed by Security Watch Africa, and uh, we'll bring you the report from that occasion. One of the basic human rights of citizens, as enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights by the United Nations (UN) is the right to no unfair detention. The protection and sanctity of human lives, especially the most vulnerable in the society, received the boost from the Nigerian police force. The police, under the leadership of Inspector General of Police, IGP Ibrahim Idris, Wednesday presented the Nigerian Police Force Order 20 as amended, otherwise known as the Police Duty Solicitor Scheme, PDSS to the commissioners of police and other relevant stakeholders in Abuja. The police force order 20, which was first introduced in 2006 to give legal assistance to detained police officers, has been expanded to include all detained suspects at police cells at no cost to help them defend their case in line with the principle of fair hearing. The need for an administrative instrument to correct some of the identified lapses gave rise to the amendment of the Police Order 20, or PDSS, which is a tripartite scheme comprising the Nigerian Police, the Legal Aid Council of Nigeria, and the Open Society Justice Initiative. The amended Police Duty Solicitor Scheme, PDSS, is said to be a tool the IGP Ibrahim Idris intends to use in changing the phase of policing in the country to bring about the much-needed public and international acceptance of the Nigerian police as an institution operating within the confines of the law and respects the rights of all Nigerians. The IGP, who was represented by the Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of the First Criminal Investigation Department, DIG Haisan Dagala, told participants that it was time to change the public perception of the Nigerian police to that of international best practices, bearing in mind that the police is a friend to all. The scheme will guarantee lawyers engaged by the Legal Aid Council access to persons arrested and detained in the police stations across the country to offer them free legal representation and assist them to contact their relations or lawyers of their own choice. This will reduce it, if not eliminate, the usual allegation of prolonged detentions, torture and extortion at police formations across the country. The legality of the scheme is derived from Section 35 and 36 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. Both the force and the general public stand to benefit from this scheme. The police are often accused of torture and inhuman treatment at police stations, 
will now have an independent person not only to us as check to their excesses, but they could be vital witnesses to the officers when accused wrongly. The IGP clearly stated that the current police management has zero tolerance to violation of the rights of citizens and corruption and that there will be no hiding place for officers whose conduct run foul of the law. A retired commissioner of police, Mr. Frank Odita, in his goodwill message, commended the police leadership for keeping faith with the PDSS. Uh, legal officers at the department to see that uh, we have this program enshrined in our first order. The CP Legal had made it clear why it came on board. And I just want to say that it was kick-started by us because I was part of the CSOs. I went to the States along with the CSOs to conduct training for our police officers and legal officers in the states where it first started. Mr. Kingbola Adeniron, advisor to the vice president on rule of law, retreated the federal government determination to assist the police in carrying out its constitutional responsibilities and how it intends to support the police in ensuring that the PDSS works. Presidency, as you know, is always very um, sensitive towards police needs. Uh, you are aware uh, that the president, uh, I think it was in 2015, basically ordered the recruitment of 10,000 additional police officers across you know, the different cadres uh, within the police force. And there have been subsequent recruitment since then. Uh, so in terms of shoring up the manpower within the police, that's something which is priority for this administration. Then beyond that, when you now start talking about personal issues, particularly when you uh, discuss issues of the lawyers, we've already you know, heard about how we're going to use youth core members who are lawyers, we're going to use the legal aid council, we're going to use other legal aid institutions like offices of public defender, and then we're going to rely on pro bono lawyers uh, through public interest law partnerships. And with that, we should be able to get as many people as possible to assist us in this project. A delegate to the Police and Security Forces International Committee of the Red Cross, Mr. Petru Telly, commended the Nigerian police for this landslide achievement. The Force Order 20 that the police, Nigeria Police Force, is implementing has a big potential. So we are all uh, confident and optimistic, and ICRC as an observer is confident that this Police Force Order uh, 20 as amended it actually has a big potential to change things in detention and to facilitate also the work of the police officers involved he however cautioned that the international community is watching and intends to monitor the PDSS program DIG Dagala expressed his confidence in the implementation of the scheme yeah, the, it is not a hidden fact that for some time members of, of the public have uh, always had that kind of distrust about the, I mean, uh, partnering or collaborating with the Nigerian police force, maybe due to some behaviors of fear of our men. So with this, I think it's going to go a long way in uh, bringing back uh, some of the lost uh, images or perceptions about the force. Uh, it's, it's a forum by which uh, we are pretty sure that uh, trust will come up and then uh, the rights of citizens will be guaranteed, among others. The conference ended with an appeal to the commissioners of police assigned to state commands to prevail on their area commanders, divisional police officers, and officers in charge of criminal investigation department, CID, to allow lawyers under the scheme have access to detainees in the cell without any form of hindrance.
Welcome back. Um, <clears throat> Nigerians look forward to that period uh, when uh, the police will be the darling of all. Will really, uh, the slogan by the, of the police, which says police of, is a friend, is actually practicable. But uh, uh, <clears throat> all over the world, uh, the citizens, most citizens say police as uh, that uh, agency that uh, is out to stop them from doing what they want to do, uh, really. But law enforcement, uh, law abiding citizens make friends with police. So we'll, we encourage you. Uh, as a law abiding citizen to make friends with police. Police is your friend, truly. Uh, in spite of um, whatever shortcomings, that uh, moves and uh, procedures to correct such shortcomings. And that is why uh, on this program, we encourage that um, whatever complaint you have against any of the security agencies, send it across to us. We'll take it up and we we'll seek redress for, for you. Um, we we'll, we'll strive to have a security service that is better and serve the people much, much better and expectant as it should be. Yes, uh, that brings me to, to announce again to you that um, the 15th edition of our Secru Africa Security Watch Awards Conference and Exhibition is scheduled and is coming up uh, very, very fast. Uh, nominations have started coming in and the speakers are preparing to, to be part of the, the event which will be taking place in Banjul, the Gambia. Uh, so we expect you to join us and, uh, in any way you can. Uh, say your nomination. If you notice any of the security officers, the security agency that has done well, send this to us so that we can uh, remark and check the, what they have done and they will be honored. And we need to discuss uh, the issue of security collectively. So um, definitely we must leave other programs to continue until we come your way again next week. I will, I will urge you to please be your brother's keeper, watch your back, and remain blessed. Bye for now.